<laughs> the rocket is called the Compton Comet, and it was named by the students. I supply all the expensive components, which I have, okay, and then all the rest of the building and, and the development of the, the fuselage and stuff, they do. So it is their rocket. It's not my rocket, it's their rocket. This is the Tomorrow's Aeronautical Museum. Robin Petgrave, the founder of it, about 20 years ago, wanted to have a place where the ethnic kids of Compton could come and have some pride. That's why you see these guys, see the Tuskegee Airmen. They're the greatest pilot, fighter pilots there ever were, but you don't know that because nobody bothers to tell you that. Okay, and part of it really is because they're black. Okay, they didn't. The main thing about them is because they had something to prove, because they were black and they were pilots and they were damn good pilots. They uh, made sure they never lost the bomber. So my goal here is to build that. If we can build a rocket and put it in space, we can. A handful of ethnic students, black, Latin, can do this. They're building the rocket. I just show them how. So they're all young engineering students. They're either from Compton College, I got a few from uh, uh, Cal Poly Pomona. Okay, so but they're all young engineers. They want to make a name for themselves. I got PhDs that are dedicating their time for free to teach them how to do the math, how to figure out how the rocket will fly, how fast it will go, how high it will go, okay? So, Robin loves this project, and he's like, well, I don't have any money to pay you. I said, don't worry about it. I'm gonna come here till we fly this thing. And then the idea was that this rocket lab will be here in perpetuity. He ran into a guy uh, by the name of Foster Standback. And Foster Standback said, what I'd like to do is, you know, we ought to do is see if we could put a rocket in space. And so Foster Standback put the money up for the rocket lab. And when he did, uh, uh, through another friend of mine, Robin called me, he said, could you build a rocket that would go to 45,000 feet in three months? I said, I don't know, and they're very complex, you know, take years. And he said, well, I'd like to see if you could do that. So he started paying me, but then there were issues involved, there was no money. So I've been volunteering here for three years now. And I, I come here and I meet these students two times a month, now it turns into four or five times a month. And we decided we can actually build this rocket to go to space. We started scrounging up all the parts that I had from other projects. and. Uh, Quarter million dollars later, we're right on the verge. The reason why I've been so dedicated is because I can't put a value on what they're doing for us. This is something that you would have to go into industry to learn. Uh, even though I'm studying to be a physicist and stuff, this is something that I can always use. I've been down and out, like I know what it's like to not have anything. So when they tell us, hey, this is a project that's, you know, X amount of dollars, you know, that kicks me into gear because I'm like, you know, I need to make sure that I'm showing the same dedication that they are. And I think that that's been like really influential for me as far as being on this project is, you know, once I get to where I'm going, I want to kind of do the same thing and keep this little legacy going we got here at the, the Tomorrow's Aeronautical Museum. We are trying to flare this one inch pipe with supposed to feed liquid oxygen, oxygen to the uh, tank. And uh, we're trying to make it so that it doesn't slip through the block here. We're trying to measure the angle for this um, fitting. We don't have like a protractor yet and we don't have the schematics, the original schematics for this. So we have to calculate the angle so we can bend the tubing to go into the fuel. of the throat and the diameter of the exit. So it's a little bit difficult right now because like when they made this they rounded it off where like so this is like right here would be considered the the exit but it's really not so you have to get like you have to get like the more shaded area so that for the true uh for the true exit and for the true um throw. I started building the rockets when I was about 12 years old. Started studying rocketry. So by the time I was 19, I designed the body for a uh, rocket dragster that was one of the fastest ones in the quarter mile in the world. But through the years, I kind of did a little bit of everything. Then I met Mike. Mike decided to do a vertical jump. And then kind of as a joke, Mike was a, a flat earther. He believed the earth is flat. But kind of, kind of a joke, I said, well, why don't we just tell people that you're jumping to see if the earth is flat? And it just kind of took off. And, uh, you know, I think everybody liked the craziness of it, and then Mike was known around the world. We're going to do a hot fire, which means the rocket will be all stood up, all the fuel in it, and we'll fire, do a hot fire test where we actually light the rocket and we strap it down to the ground. We're going to do that late fall, early winter this year, 
and that'll give us time to find out what the bugs are and the problems are. Then late spring, early summer, we're going to take it to the MTA facility uh, just outside of California City, about 20 miles outside of California, and we have a ceiling there of 50,000 feet. We're going to try to reach 45,000 feet. So it'll go up, you know, and then it'll fall back, and the parachute will come out and drop it to the ground. And 45,000 feet is nine miles straight up. After that, the guy who funded this rocket lab said he'd give me the money to rebuild it. That'll take about a year. And then we'll take it to New Mexico. And that'll give us time to get all the paperwork filled out and all the permission from the government. You just can't launch a rocket into space. You gotta go through the FAA and they have to review the rocket and send experts out and blah, blah, blah. So once we've done that, then we'll be able to launch probably uh, that following year, summer or fall. We're gonna launch from New Mexico, uh, the spaceport there, the same one that the Virgin Galactic flew out of and we're going to go all the way to space. So try to, 62.8 miles, straight up. And when we do, we'll go stunt. This is now my boy's project. You see what I mean? And we're good. And that's the idea. That's what I did. That's what I wanted to do.